This is what $500 worth of white t-shirts looks like. Now, for most of my life, I've bought the Hanes like four pack. So what am I doing with t-shirts that range from $15 to almost $100 each? Welcome, I'm Carl Murawski, and this is the channel that gives the big middle finger to fast fashion and helps you own fewer, better things. Now, a cornerstone of this channel is that cost per wear matters and that buying higher quality stuff ultimately yields a better value overall. Now, the old Hanes four-pack tees that I used to buy for $16, they were okay, but they seemed to get dingy really fast, the collar would lose its shape, and honestly, they weren't really a pleasure to wear. They were kind of scratchy and, you know, that kind of thing. So it does stand to reason that a t-shirt that costs $25 or $50 or $75 or even more should last even longer, be more pleasurable to wear, and overall be a better value for your money. But is that the case? Well, let's look at the contenders. Number one is the Free Note Cloth 9 ounce pocket tee, which I purchased for $70 over at Standard and Strange. The Iron Heart 6.5 ounce loop wheel t shirt, which I purchased for $85 at Self Edge. The Warehouse Slub Cotton t shirt, which I purchased for $80 at Self Edge. The American Giant Premium Slub t, which I purchased for $50 at American Giant. The Mersby Schwannen 2 thread heavy, which I purchased for $95 at Self Edge. The Indigo Farah Wilson tee, which I purchased for $65 at Franklin & Poe. The Lady White tee in natural, which I purchased for $55 at Lost and & Found. And the Goodfellow & Co. Garment Dyed t-shirt, which I purchased for $14 at Target. Now there are other great brands out there like Tezumea and Samurai and Velvachine, but you know, for 500 bucks, I think I got a pretty good cross section of the high end tees that are out there. And I threw in that Target brand as sort of a wild card. Goodfellow & Co. is a pretty high value t-shirt. And if it's, you know, almost as good as the $50 t-shirt, you'd be better off buying several of those. One thing that you have to keep in mind is your intended use. Are you going to be wearing these as undershirts? Are they gonna be used as a standalone piece? Do you need a pocket or not? These are things that need to be considered before you go and make the choice. So considering your use is absolutely key. Hey, you know what? Do you have a rundown that I could take a look at? Now here's a quick rundown of the features of each of these t-shirts. The free note cloth is made in the USA. It uses nine ounce open-ended cotton. It's tubular knit and there are bar tack accents on each side of the pocket. The Iron Heart is made in Japan, six and a half ounces, loop wheel construction, and it's been given one wash. The warehouse is made in Japan. I couldn't find how heavy the actual slub cotton is, but it uses double needle construction and it's been rinsed. The American Giant is made in the USA, uses 6.6 .6 ounce slub cotton, and it's been clean finished on the interior with taping at the neck. All right, we'll get back to the rundown uh, right now. The Mersby Schwannen is made in Germany. It's 7.8 ounces loop wheeled, and they use a different, softer yarn for the inside of the shirt than the outside of the shirt. They also use no chemicals and claim that it will shrink one half size with the first wash. The Indigo Farah is made in Portugal. I couldn't find the weight of the cotton, but it is 100% US Supima cotton and it runs large. The Lady White is made in the USA. It's six ounces, tubular knit, and pre-shrunk. The Target Goodfellow & Co. brand is made in India, and I couldn't find any information on the weight of this fabric. So in that rundown, you may have heard a few terms which may be unfamiliar, so I'll do my best to kind of quickly fill you in on some of those. The Ironheart and Mersby Schwannen are loop wheeled, which is a method invented in 1926 in which cotton yarns are knit around a cylinder very slowly, taking about an hour to produce three feet of fabric. Now this was primarily used between the 1930s and the 1960s before modern methods gained popularity for their speed. Of course, these old machines were bought up by artisan shops and only a few exist today in the factories of Mersby Schwannen and Kanakichi Knitting Company. So loop wheel fabric is similar to shuttle loom selvage denim in the old school way that it's produced. The end result is a very soft and fluffy yet durable fabric with a ton of character. And of course, there are varying levels of this fabric and all loop wheel tees aren't created equal. This differs from tubular knit, which is about 10 times faster and uses many high tension threads to create a tubular fabric, resulting in a t-shirt without side seams. Regular old tees are made from flat knit fabric and sewn at the sides. Now, this doesn't make them inferior, but it's just a more modern and cost-effective way to make a t-shirt. Supima or long staple cottons are sometimes listed, and honestly, you could spend a whole day learning about the different types of cotton. 
Typically though, the longer the cotton fiber, the softer and stronger the yarn is. And there are many other factors like how thick the fibers are, how they're treated, where they're grown, but we'll get into all that another time. Now it's really difficult to determine long-term durability without wearing each of these t-shirts time and time again for about a year or so. We don't have that kind of time here. So I think if you look at the neck of each, you could really tell which one is probably gonna hold up the best. In my bet, it's probably that warehouse tee. Look at that neck. I mean, that thing is reinforced, thick, durable, but it also is quite tight. You know, I have a pretty thick neck and that thing is pretty close. If you want something a little bit more relaxed, well, a couple of the other versions are a little bit more relaxed. And here's a little hack. If you just like wearing these things underneath a t-shirt, you wanna save some money, go with the Kirkland version. The Kirkland actually has a T, I, I think that the, the neck is guaranteed not to stretch out. And from what I've, I've heard from people, I haven't experienced it myself, but several people have told me that that neck just doesn't stretch out. So if you want an, a t-shirt to use as an under T or whatever, um, an undershirt, then go ahead and use those. Supposedly they're very, very good. Now, how about the fit? Some of these have a short hem, some have a long hem, some are a little bit tighter, some are a little bit looser. Depends on your body type. A husky Polish guy like me has a hard time fitting into a lot of these Japanese brands. So you'll have to take a look here. I put them all on a form and showed you how they fit on that form. You can tell that some of them are a little bit smaller than others. So depending on what you want, again, so it's going to depend on your application and your body type as to which one of these is best for you. Now, just for fun, my buddy Albert recently came over. I put a little piece of tape over all of the tags of all these t-shirts, and I asked him to pick out which ones he liked best. And the results were pretty surprising. You know, one would think that it'd be pretty easy to pick out the $14 Target brand versus the $95 Mersby Schwannen version uh, and say, okay, there's a huge difference here. I want this one. But actually, it wasn't as easy as that. So. Here's a little bit of that conversation. The full version of this will be released in a couple of days, but still, here, go ahead and check out what Albert had to say. I'm gonna, how I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna say, if I were shopping, which ones would I put into my maybe buy it? All right, yeah, okay, good idea, there so you that, go. That might be, that might be good for me. Yeah, because cost, sometimes the things that you see, like I know the, the Mersby Schwann, um, the, it's, it's a two thread. Like the inside is a different makeup than the outside, it's meant to be softer on the inside, so, You'd have to get your microscope out or put it on to really feel the difference. I mean, for pure, like, smoothness of fabric, feeling a little bit like what I'm wearing right now, it's not the whitest of the white ones, mm. but this does have a very nice, soft finish. Mm. So I would definitely put this in my, oh, I like the softness of this one. So this would go in the softness department. All right, why don't you take off the... the... Oh, we're going to do it. Gonna... Yeah, well, let's reveal what it is. I agree, though. Right. That's got a nice... You like the fit? It's light. It's also light. It is. This you would wear. You could wear in a warmer. Uh, that's the indigo, indigo fera. fera. Yep. yep. Put that in my cart. <laughs> <laughs> um, Good choice. Yeah. By the way. <laughs> now I remember buying a pocket tee from Franklin and, and Poe, and so um, this feels a little bit like a pocket tee that I did get from Franklin and Poe. Okay. And there's something about the stitch that's. I'm trying to make the mental connection. Uh, I'm I'm gonna guess and risk embarrassing myself. <laughs> um, this both of the pocket tees are lovely. Mm -hmm. They have a nice weight. This is a little heavier. This has more texture, and it's got, for good and for bad, that one brown stitch. Now, yeah, yeah, the accent stitch. You gotta want the accent yeah, stitch, yeah. otherwise <laughs> this tee is like I like it except it's kind of accent yeah, stitch. Yeah, yeah. Or it's got the accent stitch, <laughs> like it's the same. So I'm gonna say free note. Okay. I'm guessing free note. Okay, yeah, you're absolutely right. I'm right? You are right. Yeah! <laughs> Woo! So that's the, <laughs> that's the free note cloth. Um, I can't believe I guessed. Oh, you got it, man. It was, yep. the, it was the accent. Yep. This one has got a really nice weight. It's, it's leaning loop wheel, but not full loop wheel vibe. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. The reason I, this would be a t-shirt I'd buy to buy to wear as a t-shirt not as an undershirt it's the it's a little oh on a, a standalone layer kind of thing the, yeah this weight is a little bit more weight and i um i would i would definitely wear it i like i mean it's got the great really nice structured uh the collar looks like it's going to be sturdy um the stitching looks good 
It's a little a little heavy for an everyday under under a shirt under shirt. Mm -hmm. So this would be yeah, I would wear this. Why don't you I take the tape? Why don't you take the tape? Do the reveal on this one. All right. Let's see what you got. It's really because I'm nice, not even really sure. It's got the re the nice reinforced stitched on the collar. Yeah. I would go for this one. Merz. Ah, there you go. That's the big Merz that's the big bucks the right there. Schwanen. <laughs> and sure enough, there's a Schwanen right in there. There's a swan. Yeah, a I knew that. That's there. Okay, so now that all makes sense. Try to pick out the target brand one. Okay. Out of the group that you have, because you picked out three winners I'm here thinking without that a doubt. The target one is maybe gonna be this is a little bit more of a standard. So that uh, more affordable kind of Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna put this in the maybe, maybe it, but I'm not okay. I'm not that that's in the the maybe. Okay. I would say this is in the maybe. This actually looks a little like a Kirkland. Hmm. This is I'm guessing Lady White. I'm just guessing yeah, Lady White. You got White. it. Like that is the Lady White. This is, this is uh, leaning loop wheelie too. Mm -hmm. So this is not one of the store, the other store ones. Yeah. This you, is Ironheart, or was the other one? Uh, warehouse. You can also tell if you look at the collar how structured the collar is. Like, yeah, this is that's this is, not gonna wear yeah, out on you. You know. Go ahead. Yeah, pull up, pull up. Let's see, let's see what it is. No. Warehouse. Oh, okay. All one. right. Well, that's okay. So, that so one, two of these are your. The, well, there's an American Giant in this bunch, and there's a Target, and then there's an Ironheart. That's right. If the Ironheart was the loop wheel. Did you say loop wheel? I, I think that I said the then Ironheart was loop wheel. this is Ironheart. It better be, because otherwise... Wait, the, this one here? You think yeah. this is the Ironheart? Okay. Yeah, I mean, because it's loop wheelie. Okay. Th these are not loop wheelie. This has that slubby texture to it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this could be a surprise. This is American Giant. <laughs> oh, shit. Now I'm really... <laughs> did, did, did they, are they marketing this as a loop wheel American no. Giant? That's, so that's this is their, just how it comes out. That's their slub... Um, oh, they're but they're premium, slub. they're premium slub tee. Premium slub. And I have that same shirt in a couple of colors and in long sleeve as well. And I've been really impressed for the price. Nice. That's one of they the make good stuff. They, they do. Really do because of you. I got uh, American Giant like a zippy, like a zippy sweater thing. Oh yeah. 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 The last time I was there, and that really crazy heavy hoodie. Oh, Dude, the hoodie's I, amazing. I was yeah. on a roll. Now I'm over two in the last two. But, but I gotta say though, okay, the fact that you. Thought that this one could have been of the level of an Ironheart yeah. speaks very highly of the American Giant. Yeah, I would this say. is. Yeah, I would say that um, I, a lot of their stuff seems to be kind of like that. You're like, oh, this should be more expensive than it is. Right. Yeah, I'd say you're right. Yeah. And that's about, uh, I'd say, around fifty bucks. So one of these is an Ironheart, and one of these is a Target. Yeah. Is it that obvious though? When you're looking at what an Ironheart you, you got in your hands there, an Ironheart and a Target, which I mean, is it really obvious when you look at them side by side? Um, hmm. Because we're probably talking about a $75 difference. Or maybe a little less. Hmm, interesting. <laughs> There's also some pressure, so, you know, it's uh, maybe maybe if you were looking at it otherwise, it would be... Uh, I, I'm going to just say that the cotton on this one is a little bit more brushed. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to say it was a little more pricey. And I could imagine Target selling a pocket tee, mm -hmm. like as a, a real go-to regular item. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with that. That must be the Ironheart. Then. This is the Ironheart. Yeah. Okay. All right. Go ahead. Peel off the label. Let's see. Uh oh. Uh oh. This is trouble. Uh oh. <laughs> I'm so embarrassed. This is Ironheart. All yeah, right. Yeah, okay. So you got it. You got it. No, what, what really <laughs> honestly gave it away, didn't give it away, but the slightly softer, finer grain, hmm. that was the only thing. Dude, you have a great t-shirt collection. <laughs> Not bad, eh? You're going to just wash these 12 times? Yeah, it's, it's in the name of science. Most of these tees recommend hang drying after washing. And if you're gonna spend 100 bucks on a t-shirt, then you're probably gonna take really good care of it. So hang drying is no big deal. But if you're lazy like me and you just wanna throw it in the washer and then in the dryer, well then the American Giant and the Lady White and the Target are probably best for you because all of these can be laundered with basically all of your other whites with no problem and no shrinkage. Now to test how much these t-shirts actually do shrink, I went ahead and washed and hung dry all of them 12 times measured them before and after, and calculated the difference. Before washing these t-shirts, I took three measurements on each, from the collar down to the hem, across the bottom of the hem, and then from pit to pit. I then repeated these measurements after washing and hang drying all of the t-shirts.
Combining the amount of total shrinkage, this is what we came up with. The warehouse shrank a total of three and a half inches. The Mersby Schwannen shrunk a total of two and a half inches. The Ironheart shrunk a total of two inches. The American Giant shrunk a total of one and a quarter inch. The Lady White shrank one inch. The Goodfellow & Co. shrank one half inch. The Indigo Farah shrank one quarter of an inch. The Freenote Cloth shrank one quarter of an inch. Now look guys, full transparency here. This video sort of threw me for a loop. Originally, when I was thinking about making it, I figured, okay, I'm gonna buy a whole bunch of white t-shirts. After all, how much different can white t-shirts be? I'll compare them, I'll give my, you know, my feelings about each, and then hopefully make a good recommendation to somebody as to which one is the best here. That's not what happened. What I realized is that even though they're all the same color, they're all essentially the same pattern with a few little minor differences, they are completely different beasts. And that the customer, the person who will value a $95 Mersby Schwannen or, you know, comparable t-shirt is looking for things com that are completely different than somebody who's gonna buy the American Giant or the Lady White. The higher end tees are basically the equivalent of luxury t-shirts, if there is such a thing. I mean, putting on that Mersby Schwannen is like wearing lotion. It's so soft on the inside, so finely made that it's like, oh my God, I almost don't wanna get this thing dirty. To me, a t-shirt's always been something that you put on to do yard work or you put it on underneath other clothes, right? So this was definitely a, a, an eye-opening experience for me. And I think that the guy who buys those things appreciates that old world quality, the fact that it's loop wheeled and it took so long to make, the, the character in the fabric itself, that guy or girl is looking for something completely different than somebody who's just looking for a durable t-shirt to wear underneath their flannels. Now on the other end of the spectrum, that Goodfellow & Co. actually surprised me pleasantly. For like 14 bucks or 15 bucks, whatever the thing cost, it's a pretty good staple of your wardrobe. Now you're not gonna get any of those things that you get in the higher end t-shirts. You're not gonna see a really nice weave pattern with certain you know, irregularities and a certain level of artistry to it. There's none of that. There's hardly anything here besides just a plain white t-shirt, which is exactly what some guys want. You know, this is definitely gonna find a place in my rotation. There's no doubt about it. So I can't tell you that, look, don't buy the $14 one because it just isn't as good as the Mersby Schwannen. It's as good to somebody who values different things. In the end, what I learned is that there's a severe cost to appreciating the finer things in life. There is a significant amount of diminishing return with stuff like this. You're gonna pay double for things that are, you know, just a little bit different or better and only maybe noticeably to you. I also learned that my wife is not a fan of me using the washing machine for my YouTube uh, experiments. If you wanna see more Good Better Best series, I've gone ahead and made you a playlist right here. That is where I will keep all of the Good Better Best series. I've compared some interesting products already, so hopefully you can go check that out and get some value out of that. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it, and I'll catch you next time.